There is talk of possibly getting rid or cutting the federal excise tax on oil, gasoline, essentially. Um, the federal government is certainly not committed to anything like that, but has not ruled it out. Some provinces have already suspended taxes. Is it a good idea? Tom Rand joins us now, managing partner of Arcturn Ventures, longtime investor in clean energy. Thanks very much for joining us, Tom. Yesterday, we Jack Mintz and on the, on the um, on the channel of the University of Alberta. He suggested that in the short term, anyway, um, g g demand for gasoline is not responsive to the price. So. Cutting the taxes would bring down the cost. And so would it mean a big increase in gasoline consumption? In the short term, is gasoline demand inelastic, in other words? Yeah, I would certainly agree with Jack that the demand is, is roughly insensitive to price. <clears throat> That's why a, a carbon price is not that effective when it comes to transportation fuels, oh. in particular diesel, right? Diesel is the big industrial fuel, long haul trucking, cat powers, construction equipment, all that kind of stuff. So. I would agree that it's insensitive to price. Um, I, I would also, I would argue, and, and the notion of have a gas tax holiday is certainly effective, would lower the price, would ease consumers' pain, there's no doubt about that. I would also point out, you know, the federal and provincial tax on a liter of gasoline is somewhere between 25 and 75 cents, depending on where you are. That's less than the, the, the refining margins on diesel today, right? Mm. Half the cost of diesel at the pump is refining margins. So, not very business friendly, but the UK kind of said, look, I'm going to hit the, you know, the, the oil majors with a windfall tax. So there's more than one way to approach this problem and eliminating taxes one, but targeting refinery profits, which are up 500, 600 percent since before this, this, this jump. That's another way to do it. So I think there's a pretty good discussion to be had about which you target the refiners or the tax. We'll talk about the refiners in a sec, but just sticking with tax, you agree that that tax, a tax on fuel is regressive in the sense that it, it mm. hits lower income people just the same as people who are driving Porsches. Yeah, I mean, it depends on how much you drive, but broadly speaking, it, it's regressive, just like a sales tax is, is, is somewhat regressive, unlike an income tax. So I, I would certainly agree with that. And that's partly why I think a really smart climate policy targets things like clean fuel standards, where you sort of lever in other kinds of optionality inside fuel itself, rather than just relying on price alone to drive response. Um, and, other, and then long term, it's EVs, EVs, EVs. And so those two combined, I think, are how you tackle transportation emissions. Carbon pricing, I think, is, is somewhat ineffective there and hits consumers particularly hard. That's interesting. So you're not dismissing the idea of a temporary gas tax cut necessarily. Are no, I'm, I prefer the, the windfall tax on a refiner, okay. frankly, because this is a temporary situation. The temporary margin uh, 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 gouging essentially by refiners is, is probably a better target. But there's probably healthy disagreement about which of those two. I would land on the on the refiner side, not the tax side. Next time Imperial Oil reports, uh, we're going to zero in on their downstream profits. Of course, they're a huge refiner. But if you were to put some kind of a windfall tax on refining, it seems a little unfair. It seems like you're changing the rules of the game in, in the middle yeah. of it. Yeah, you are. Um, that's, that's absolutely true. And there'd be lots of pushback from industry to that point. But I guess the question, you're changing the rules halfway through the game for the government when you do a tax holiday too. So, so it, it really is a question of which do you want to favor? I mean, this is a revenue generation tool. It doesn't quite pay for our roads. In the US, it's firewalled to pay for roads. Still doesn't do it. So at the end of the day, we do have to figure out how to pay for infrastructure. And that's what the federal tax on gas was meant to do, is pay for roads and allow municipalities. So it doesn't go there. It goes into general revenue. So it is that, that, that kind of, it is problematic. But those are the legitimate choices that we need to make. And for sure, it's unfair to refiners. But, you know, that's life sometimes. Give us your, your thoughts on what I think is a belated realization by the Canadian government that critical minerals are important. America is doing the same. But China has owned this exotic minerals processing industry. It must be decades now. Are they only waking up to this now? Well, China owns a lot of it because they're willing to pollute their environment in ways that we don't. Like, so, for example, in refining lithium, um, the Chinese dump enormous amounts of toxic effluent into their oceans, right. and we simply don't allow that here. So part of it has been environmental regulatory controls that we let they do it, we don't. 
In terms of mining the stuff itself, I mean, Canada's always been a mining superpower. Uh, you know, that's what Bay Street raises money for all over the world. So we're certainly in the game. Now, as we think about an industrial strategy targeting where's the, you know, I do think the next geopolitical battle is over control of clean tech uh, technology that's that, and minerals and materials that supply the infrastructure of a low carbon economy. That's going to be the next big battle. Jerry Butts talks about this, a bunch of other people do too. And I think they're right. So Canada thinking hard about where we play there and anticipating mm -hmm. how we want to play, is very important. I mean, don't forget, even the, the oil sands in Alberta, right? That came from very focused government support for a long time that targeted mm. that resource and said, that's going to be strategically important for us. Let's invest all kinds of public money to develop it. I mean, so that's no different. We've had an industrial strategy for a long time. Uh, it's, it's not crazy to think about what our industrial strategy would be going forward. What I like about the way the feds are doing it is they're approaching each province and saying, how are you going to play? Mm -hmm. And a place like Quebec says, well, we got boatloads of cheap hydropower. And you know, Newfoundland says the same kind of thing. We can build you know, electrolysis and hydrogen plants here. Quebec is targeting value add to battery chemistry. So they want to build a manufacturing center on top of the raw resource. So every province, I think, can leverage its strengths. And I think that's a very smart way for the feds to approach it.